Welcome to Obsidian for Tabletop RPGs. Let's learn how to use the tool. Alright, g'day guys and welcome back today to another Obsidian video. Today we're just going to be having a conversation. And that conversation is about, should I have one vault, or two vaults, or multiple vaults? Like, how should I contain all of my information? There's people that like to play lots of games, so you might have uh, one system of rules, but maybe two or three groups running. Or you might play Pathfinder as well as 5th edition, as well as Cyberpunk, for example. And you're probably asking yourself, well, should I have one vault? Should I have everything in the same place? Like some of my content is reused and what should I do? So I thought I'd just make this video just to have a, a chat about like, what do I do? Now, historically, I'm a D&D 5th edition player. All right. So I have a vault that is dedicated to D&D 5th edition. Um, that's this vault here. Um, and this is my 5e vault. Okay. Um, so everything that I have D&D 5th edition is in this vault. Now, we're in the process of moving over to Pathfinder 2nd Edition. Um, we've played it now as a result of the SRD madness. Um, we really like it, so we're going to move over. So, what do I do? I personally have a different vault for Pathfinder 2nd Edition, okay? Now, why do I do that? Because, technically, we're going to play in the same world, alright? So, we're playing in the Forgotten Realms uh, for d and I'm not going to move out of the Forgotten Realms when we move to Pathfinder. Uh, we're probably going to keep playing in the Forgotten Realms. Uh, for anyone who's seen my d and room, they would know that I have a very large, very expensive map on my back well, uh, wall of the Sword Coast. So for me, like I've invested in that land. I like that there's a lot of content available for it. Um, and it doesn't matter what rules we use, right? You can, you can play in any world with any rule set generally. So... We're going to play Pathfinder in the Forgotten Realms, which is a fifth edition campaign world. Um, and that's completely acceptable and okay, okay? Like, so, um, why wouldn't I then go over to my fifth edition vault and just start playing in here, all right, um, with Pathfinder rules? And I think the answer for that for me comes down to linking, okay? And, I'll reset this little example I was doing here. So if we're playing D&D 5th edition and I need a goblin, I type goblin into my name. And I get two options come up. This one here is coming from 5th edition. But if I come in here and type goblin, I get another option. So see when I'm picking here, I don't really get any sort of distinguishing um, idea of like what this system actually belongs to. I kind of have to like commit to clicking one of the links before I can actually see oh this one belongs to well actually this one's also coming from the compendium BCRA humanoid goblin so that's also coming from fifth edition um, but I'm pretty sure I've got another one in here for example which would be another goblin oh, they've got different different things going on in uh, Paizo land. Okay. So here we go. Let's type this. Goblin dog. Alright, so there's lots of different goblins going on in Pathfinder. Anyway, you get the idea, right? Having lots of uh, similar notes in a system is going to cause you linking conflicts and I guess that's my problem with having two systems in the same vault I certainly wouldn't recommend it right because especially if you're talking something like D&D 5th edition and Pathfinder okay so both of those games originated with one of the original worlds of D&D um, both of those games share either similar or same names for things so there's spells that are the same there is uh, monsters that are the same uh, there'll be equipment and items that is likely the same as well. Like both have health potions, for example. I'm sure both of them have a fireball spell. I'm sure both of them have a goblin and an orc. All right. So that's my, my big thing is I like to have one vault per system. Okay. And that way, that is my vault for that system. And whatever I play, I play in there. So if I'm playing D&D 5th edition... Um, and I have one primary group that I play with, a bunch of blokes that we've been playing together for 10 odd years now. Um, but sometimes I get other groups come along. So K 
kid groups that like to play and want to have birthday parties and stuff like that or I might have the old ad odd adult group that wants to sort of come along and have an ad hoc game what do I do personally well I like to have a party folder and in that I have the daily depth in which is like that's that's my adult group then we have a family party which is the people in my family that play like we have a, a game around Christmas time uh, last time they were in here for example um, and that's like that's one way for us to go ahead and sort of maintain all that information for example um, is keep all of those sort of people contained uh, within that one vault okay now the reason why I do that the reason why it works for me it probably won't work for everybody right so I don't use timelines I don't use calendars my my games are generally based on modules or adventures um, and what I generally do when I'm setting up a module or adventure is I don't write in the notes the outcome or the impact of what the players have done. I will put in the adventure and I'll prepare that adventure and I'll flesh out NPCs but it's all generic work I guess you could say that could be applicable to any group that I bring along and play inside of that module. Okay so I guess from a, um, a workflow perspective you could say like my Forgotten Realms world is the Forgotten Realms world. It doesn't matter what player is there. I don't keep track of NPCs that are dead or killed by someone, for example. Um, I just write, this is the world, this is the people that live it, these are the locations that exist in there, and there's no real player impact documented in those notes. I keep it all relatively high-level generic so that I can come along with any group and read about um, a town or a village or an NPC and it's applicable to both groups. Um, <clears throat> same sort of thing I guess with an adventure and module. I prepare that adventure and module so I can run it multiple times without having any real sort of impact on the actual note itself. It doesn't, doesn't come into the equation I guess you could say. So that's obviously one thing that um, allows me to do that. I understand there's other players and other groups out there that go into much more depth with their games, right? You're, you're working on an active timeline, you're keeping track of what day it is. There's crazy people out there that like to know like the moisture levels and the, the weather forecasts and you know, you're keeping track at a much higher level. So you have to have a think about this from your perspective and the sort of detail that you like to keep about your world. I just think for me personally, there's no point having a separate vault per group because I'm reusing a lot of that content. All right, so if I think about that out loud, you know, I've got my world with all my Forgotten Realm notes in here, all the locations, right? So then there's lots of them. I don't want to duplicate that effort into multiple vaults, so I don't. All right, same with my mechanics, my, my spells, my magic items, my rules right they're all largely static but I will continue to update them over time like if I need a new monster I will go out and find out that monster and copy it into my vault and if I had multiple vaults like per campaign or per party then I would have to go and duplicate all of those notes that I create in my one vault into the other vaults now there is a re resolution here that I've thought about that I've never tried I haven't tested this yet but there's something in Windows called a Simlink. Um, it's very technical and advanced, but basically the network engineers of the world are probably all, already aware of it. Um, but basically you can um, set up a folder in Windows so that has a, a symbolic link to another folder. And basically, as you make changes in one folder, it will keep a copy of those changes in two folders at the same time. So that's a, a potential workaround here. If you needed to have a separate vault per party, you could potentially use the sim link to keep things like your mechanics and your world topics sort of in sync between the two. Um, but then again, like that, in my mind, probably isn't worth it because, well, that means I'm effectively replicating what I'm doing anyway. It just allows me to have more changes about my party further up. So yeah, I guess like, as you can see, I like to have a folder for my party Anything that's sort of specific that needs to be tracked will go in there. Um, the one sort of play where I do keep track of what has happened is my, my session journals. Okay, and session journals is largely where we're documenting what's happened in the session, um, any sort of changes that have occurred that need to be sort of looked at afterwards. I write that up as a journal and I publish that using Obsidian Publish now. Um, it's dropped its price by 50%, so I've so, um, subscribed to that. 
Um, it's a better solution. Definitely recommend you look at it. Um, but basically, I, I keep everything in the session journals about what's occurred at my table. And what that means is if I had another long-term party playing in my game, I could just have another folder for their session journals and that would allow them to still have the, the, the one vault being used for the two parties all right, under the same system. All right, but yeah, so I don't know, just thought I'd have a conversation, let you know what I think. Um, it's really, it's, it's all about you, right? It's all about what you need and what you need to do and how you take your notes, right? So my solution is not going to work for everyone. Um, but yeah, one volt per system for me is certainly the way I like to go. And it's all about reducing that duplicate work, the, all those notes that don't need to be copied and replicated across multiple times. I try to avoid that and that's why one volt per system, all my notes go in, that's it. And then I just play my parties on top of that. Um, so anyway, that's uh, just uh, the thoughts of a rambling madman here. Um, let you know what I think and how I do it. Um, obviously, I'll leave it up to you guys to make a decision on what works for you. Um, but outside of that, um, you know, if you do enjoy these videos, please do like and subscribe. <laughs> we got to say it at every video, right? I think it's mandatory at this point. Um, outside of that, I uh, just want to say a huge thank you to my patrons. Like it's been uh, fantastic and the uh, community changes with the Discord server is really starting to come alive. Uh, so if you are watching this video, uh, wondering where the community are, we're in here in the Obsidian TTRPG community channel. Uh, we have all of these channels now available. Uh, I love this uh, little uh, Maelstrom's basically made this with AI this morning. All these chat channels, and if you need help, we have this Obsidian support uh, section here where you can now post, all right? You can come in and say, hey, I've got a problem, and you can uh, get help from the community. Or you can come in here and you can say, you know what? I've got a problem with Initiative Tracker. I've got a problem with Fantasy Stat Blocks. And you can see the posts that people have posted previously, and you can use that as a resource to see if you've got the same problem, if it's been solved already, you can jump in and see how that issue's been resolved. So it's becoming a really good sort of um, sort of place for people to hang out and get the help they need with getting through this uh, this tool's um, sort of learning curve. So anyway, huge thanks to my patrons for helping make this possible. All right, huge thanks to the community. You guys are absolutely amazing. Outside of that, I will speak to you on the socials. Have a great day.